Hi, and thanks for watching another instructional video for CSCI 1300. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to take the H file implementations that we've been working on and move them into a CPP file in order to really give them, um, really flesh them out with contents. Because all we have right now are the function declarations in our H file, just like a blueprint, we have a bunch of these functions we can call, but we haven't really figured out what they're actually going to do. So let's talk about how we could do this. So I have a bank.h which represents my class, and I've put in constructors, and I've put in mutators and accessors, and I have my private variable for the balance. So now what I can do is I can generate a CPP file with the same name as the H file that my class will be my class name. So this is the class name .h, which is bank, so it's bank.h. And I am going to link this to a bank.cpp. So in order to link this, I will have to use hashtag include bank.h. And I'm using quotation marks here, but it's just like any include that you would do previously. And I'm going to have to use um, hashtag include, um, I'm going to use using namespace here. And if you have anything else that you need to use, like strings or anything like that, then you might want to declare that here as well. And if you do iostream operations, you might want to use hashtag include iostream here as well. So say you have to print something inside of a function. Um, okay, so now let's talk about what to do. Well, what I would do, this is the simplest way to build up your CPP file, is just copy and paste the function prototypes that you have from your public section into your new file. And what we're going to do here is we are going to take all of this information and we are going to now actually flesh it out. So by that I mean we're going to actually um, give it scopes. So how do we do that? Well in order to make it a class function we have to use the class name colon colon class name again for a constructor. And we're going to do the same thing here, class name, colon, colon, as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give all of these functions their own scope. So I'm adding the class, colon, colon. And I am now going to use brackets to denote scope for each one of these. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm basically just going to go through the file. And at each line, I'm going to generate the scope brackets for the function that we're going to actually define and do something with. And once I do this, I can actually call this function even if it doesn't do anything. And last but not least, I'll have to do this one. And okay, now I need to do the same thing up here that I would have to do down here. So we have the data type. Now we have the name of the class and notice that we've linked deposit to bank and we can see here that the green is showing that it is a class name and this is a function in yellow of a class that we are linking it to or that it is a part of so we're going to do the same thing here with the other functions where we just go through and make them associated with the class that they are a part of so we are using the data type the name of the class, colon, colon, the name of the function. I don't need to specify that get balance is a const here because we already know that it is a const. Okay, so now let's go back up here to the top and talk about what we can do here. Well, like I've said before, each one of these functions has access to balance because it is a part of the overall class scope. Balance is within the class scope brackets, and so are all the function prototypes, the function definitions. So that means that we can do stuff with the balance, like set the balance to zero. Or we could set the balance in the parameterized constructor to whatever the user wants through the initial balance. 
right? So here we set it to zero. Here we set it to whatever we want to and we call it and pass it some information instead of leaving the parentheses blank. So say we want to deposit. Well, deposit would mean that we would take the balance and the balance would be itself minus the amount, right? So this would be, or if we deposit, it would actually be adding to that amount, right? So we take this amount and we're adding it into balance so that we increase balance. Now, if we want to do the same thing with withdraw, we're actually going to withdraw. So that means that balance minus itself with amount. So we take whatever is in balance and we just reduce it by amount. So say we want to generate interest. Well, interest is probably something where we would have to generate some kind of a calculation for interest. And lastly, we have to do the get balance, which I'm just going to do really quickly here because we can just return the variable. So we're just returning the private variable here. Whatever is currently within balance, we're just going to return that. And that's why we can return balance because here we have a double function. And everywhere else, we're basically just modifying balance in some way. So say we want to actually do the interest. Well, let's think about how we would do the interest. OK, so what we could do with the interest is we could create an amount and set it equal to, say, the balance times the rate divided by 100. So what we're doing is we're creating some new variable, which is temporary to this function, based on balance and rate, balance being the private variable and rate being the incoming information that we have. Now, say we wanted to use this and we wanted to use it by just calling a function, we could do that. So any one of these functions could call each other. So we can call deposit and pass the new variable amount, which is the, the balance modified by the rate divided by 100. So this is calling the other class function for deposit and passing it the amount that we have just calculated. So let's talk about the deposit a little bit more. So say we wanted to do the deposit here and we wanted to take in the fact that we might need to handle a penalty like we were talking about in previous videos. So we could have some constant which will be a penalty and the penalty will be equal to say 10. And what we could say is we could say that we can create like an if else check here. And we can say like basically, okay, if the amount that comes in is larger than penalty, I'm sorry, if instead of penalty, it's larger than the balance, right? This is when we would incur a penalty. Then balance will equal to balance minus penalty. So we're reducing by the penalty amount if we have a balance that is less than the amount and we try to withdraw that amount and we go over or we try to even do it really it's like it won't even let us so otherwise what we want to do is we want to say that um oh this is all in this should be in withdraw <laughs> okay this should be here so we're doing this in withdraw instead of in deposit deposit we really just want to do exactly what we were doing. We want to just add to the account. So this adds to the balance. Here, what we're doing is we're saying that if we try to withdraw, if we withdraw more money than money stored, we get a penalty. But otherwise, what we want to do is we really want to just set the balance the way that we had before. So this would be like the amount is less than the balance. And we can perform an, a regular operation on that. And let's talk about, let's see, do we need to talk about anything else here? Have we gone through everything so far? 
I think that we have gone through fleshing out every single one of these now. So notice that just to recap here, our constructor, a default constructor is just going to initialize to a base value. So here the base value is equal to zero. That means we haven't done anything with it. With a parameterized constructor, we're setting the bank account balance set to user input, whatever we want it to be. Now, for the other ones, we have some conditions. So the balance, balance is just going to get added to based on some amount here. So we just add to balance based on amount. But with withdraw, we basically want to take into the fact that we might need to apply a penalty. So if we want to apply a penalty, we basically have to check the amount versus the balance that is stored and deduct a penalty if it is larger. But if the amount is less than the balance, then we can just reduce the balance. And this will update the balance in our stored object either way. Okay, and to do our interest, what we want to do is we want to calculate a local variable called amount. And what we're going to do is we're going to then pass that to another function here. So we call this function here after calculating amount. We use deposit. So we go up here to deposit. And then what we do is we basically just do this operation using whatever we just calculated here in amount. And last but not least, we have the implied function to get balance, which will just return whatever is stored currently in the object variable called balance. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding.